Senator Patty Murray, senior Democrat from the great state of Washington. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Well, it's great to be with you. I want to just sort of ask this personal question to start. Uh, I feel like we need to check in on everybody uh, uh, these days after a year of COVID. What has this last year been like, you know, as a, as a, as a person, but also as a senior legislator in Congress and, of course, chairing the help committee and, you know, having, having COVID start in Washington State? What has this year been like for you? I think it's been like everybody. It's just been nonstop and uh, overwhelming and everybody diving in to get everything done right. It was in January of last year that uh, we first heard about the coronavirus um, and the case in our state. And I asked for a bipartisan briefing from our administrators in Washington, DC. And it was like, oh yeah, that's this thing happening out there. And it wasn't long before I was hearing from every friend of mine, my own family, uh, people who were sick, they couldn't get a test. They didn't know what was going on. It was just kind of this state of urgency of please help us, where's the test? And I was here in Washington, D.C. saying to administrators and anybody I could get a hold of, where are the tests? Why are we not doing this? When's this going to happen? How come this isn't happening? And it was just kind of a sense of complacency in Washington, D.C. I felt like I lived in two Washingtons, one at home where people got it. They were serious. They were trying to get their arms around it. And then here in Washington, D.C., where it's like, yeah. Um, and we saw the uh, results of that, where we were behind on testing, where we never got our hands around it, where we didn't have a president who took it seriously, and here's where we have ended. I've spent a year talking to everybody I can, from nurses and doctors and community leaders and families and teachers and homeless shelters about the impact and trying to bring that urgency back here to Washington, D.C., so we can deal with this crisis. I wonder, just sticking on this topic for a second, I wonder if you have reflected on how this may have changed this year of COVID and maybe an, an endemic COVID that never leaves us, how this may have changed our politics or, or changed us as a society. Any thoughts there? Well, I think for, for sure, the issue of healthcare has become prevalent. The fact that so many people got sick, that we all had to change our behavior, that we realized that our workplace policies, whether it's paid family leave and going to work when you're sick and you know, making somebody else sick, or whether our schools and how we keep them open, or what we do with our healthcare facilities when people can't go in and see them. So looking at uh, how we do a better job of have broadband and interconnection for people in everything, I think we all recognize through this last year that our country has some real basic infrastructure that needs to be strengthened so that we never have to go through this again. Yeah. Congratulations on taking the gavel uh, with a 51-50 split, now chair of the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. I, when I reflect back, when I think back on uh, President Obama's first year in office, I re recall that it was about April when uh, Senate Help and Senate Finance Committee started gathering input for what becomes known as the Affordable Care Act. You want to kind of walk us through what your thoughts are on how to organize the effort of uh, considering health reform in your committee over the months ahead? Well, I think there's two things we have to do at once. We, we have to address the damage that has caused so many people to lose their insurance or see their health care costs go up or their access become much harder. Um, and at the same time, we need to lay the groundwork for how we get to a place where everyone can afford health care. We now see and we know that if you don't take care of yourself, you not only <clears throat> are sick yourself, but you can infect other people. And if people don't have access to our health care, our health care system is um, too cost prohibitive to people, um, how it can affect everybody. So I think that one of the first things we need to be doing is um, uh, is looking at how we can uh, reassert and re um, affirm our healthcare system that we had under Obamacare, under the ACA. We did that actually in the recently passed American Rescue Plan. Uh, we included provisions to lower or eliminate health insurance premiums for millions of Americans. We provided incentives to states to expand Medicaid so more people would have access. And we subsidized COBRA so people can get healthcare coverage. So initially took some steps just in the last few weeks, but we need to think more broadly about what policies we have in place and what we can do to make sure that coverage is there for everyone at a cost that they can afford. 
You know, the the Rescue Act, the American Rescue Act that you uh, mentioned strikes me as in, in most circumstances, and even in this one, it, it, it's a pretty massive, significant uh, bill in terms of its impact on the healthcare system. Um, do you think that we just have not, as a society, maybe we haven't figured out how impactful this bill is because it has happened so quickly? Why, why do you think that is lost in some cases on folks? Well, I think that um, it's very hard to understand all of the scopes of the American Rescue Plan because uh, a lot of people weren't focused on the work that we had been doing. The work that we've been doing on healthcare and education, uh, vaccines, we've been working on for months, but it doesn't necessarily translate to everybody understanding it. One of the focuses we had in this bill beyond what you've heard, checks to individuals, help to governments, getting vaccines out there, was to make sure that we had a healthcare system that people could access. And that's why expanding healthcare coverage was a critical part of this. Yeah. So how do you manage the politics of your, your conference and your caucus, uh, particularly with some new members in the House? So it's a different beast, I know, altogether, but the, some of the campaign conversation was around public option, around Medicare for all, and, and certainly you have a diversity within the Senate conference. Uh, how do you manage all of those different factions and, and, and interests and try to get them to coalesce around the common effort? Well, the first thing you do is have to have people coalesce around a goal, um, and a goal of making sure that healthcare is there and accessible and affordable for everything, for everyone, um, is the goal that we're all trying to get to. And then there's different ways to get, there's a lot of different ideas. I, I try and talk more about the uh, principles that are important in it, making sure it's accessible. So that means affordable coverage for everybody. It means being at, be able to access healthcare close to home, whether you're seeing your doctor or filling your prescription. Uh, I have the, a principle about cost. We have to bring down premiums and deductibles and out-of-pocket costs because too many people don't see their doctor, don't get health care because they can't afford it. Uh, another one is on the issue of equity, which we have seen within this pandemic where uh, people uh, who are black or brown don't have the same kind of equity and they have a much higher impact from this pandemic. When you dive into that, you see the real disparities within our healthcare system. So accessing healthcare coverage has to include equity. Portability, uh, a critical issue for everybody is, is one of the um, principles that I'm looking to try and get to. Comprehensiveness, so that we cover all aspects of healthcare. It's a very broad, broad issue in, in many ways. And accountability, to make sure that our system is accountable to serving patients, not profits. So I kind of take those principles and sort of air them with my colleagues and say, what is what can we do to meet these principles? The uh, American Rescue Plan, of course, passed with uh, through a process of reconciliation, as you know all too well. And uh, mm -hmm. your uh, your legislation with Senator uh, uh, Alexander had been credited as perhaps the most ambitious and most comprehensive reform bill prior to. Uh, 2021 since the Affordable Care Act. Do you think that it's time to remove or change the filibuster so that big policy bills and ideas like the uh, bill you championed with Senator Alexander might move forward in, in this Congress? Well, I have always felt that the best solutions and the longest sustaining solutions are ones that are done bipartisan. If we just have partisan bills passed every year, if we have a new administration, a new Senate majority, it just gets changed. And that kind of continuity is, is not good for major policies. So it's much better to bring in people from different walks of life, different backgrounds, different issues to try and find common ground to move us forward. I will say um, that it's become very frustrating in the last five, 10 years here where uh, it is the partisan politics has really interfered in what we're trying to do. Um, so I think a lot of people are trying to have a conversation about how do we make sure we make progress within what I defined as having a lot of people be a part of the solution so that it's accepted by the American people and it is sustaining. You've been in the Senate uh, since 1992, uh, but You've done so much more as a workhorse than a show horse. A number of folks in our conference here uh, may be learning about you for the first time. So when they are watching you chair the Senate Health Committee and, and see you show up more often in, in the news and on headlines in that capacity, what would you like folks to know about you and your style of leadership uh, as you gavel into 2021? 
I um, really try to work by understanding where people are coming from. People that tell me stories about their own health care and the challenges that they face. People that um, are working within the healthcare system and what is happening to them. And then I listen to my colleagues about what it is that's important to them that they want to see that we can accomplish and try to bring people together to find solutions. Uh, I, I think that there's in this world a lot of times that we fight with each other, but those are not the times that we find solutions. The times that we find solutions is by really trying to understand the problem, understand real people's challenges and try to find solutions to those. Senator Patty Murray, Democrat from the state of Washington and chair of the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee. Thank you very much, Senator, I appreciate it. Thank you, good to see you.